Is it a daddy? Yeah. Mommy, no cheesing me. Read the book. <laughs> no cheesing you. Read a book. Hello and welcome back. So I am finally getting around to doing this video. I think I've been talking about it for a year, so I really do apologise. And that is going through the donor conception storybooks that I have and I have four of them and my thoughts on them and how we've introduced them and what we've been doing. So we started off with two of them, which was the P that was me and the Itsy Bitsy Gift of Life and we brought these off of Amazon. I think they were around £12 each. I think the order come to about £25, £30 and we started, I first read It's a Bitsy Gift of Life to Orin when he was just turned one. Um, obviously he didn't really kind of get anything um, from it and um, but we, we wanted to introduce it quite early on so it wasn't a thing. So the problem we're having at the moment is he suddenly through lockdown has become very very independent so he no longer wants us to read him books unless he go he's going to sleep or a nap but he, there's only two books he wants to be read, which are um, Drip and um, Cave Baby at the moment, so they're not these. But I'll kind of talk about each one and how he sort of reacted to it and my thoughts on it. So the biggest hurdle with these books is yourself. I know it's definitely me that I kind of have to go <clears throat> every time I go to read one, and it's stupid because it's not about me, and I think sometimes I make it about me, it's about him and our story together, and him understanding it, and I want him to know, and I know some people choose not to tell, that is absolutely fine, I completely get it, we're obviously telling because, well A, he's all over the internet, so if he googles his name, his very unique name, it's going to come up anyway, isn't it, and B, I, it's just the sort of person I am and Tom agreed from day dot that we'd, we wanted to kind of tell them, um, I keep saying him but it's going to be them, that um, how they were made. So, I will talk about these in order, um, I, I said I've got four, so I've got the, the, teeny, the tiny itsy bitsy gift of life, an egg donor st story and the theme is bunny rabbits. I've got the P that was me and egg donation story. A very special lady. And then it says a story about IVF, an egg donor and a little girl. And then our story, how we became a family. So I'll talk about them. I'm obviously not going to read them because I think that's like copyright and I don't know. It's just going to open a can of worms. But I'll talk about them in order of least favourite to favourite okay and this is not um and I'll give reasons why and this is not slating any of them they're all good they are all telling the same story and managing to do it in a different way which is good um I've had people ask me would I write my own and I do want to but I want to kind of get it in my head how I do it first and you know characters these have all got very different characters we've literally got a pea we've got people we've got rabbits and we've got people again so i think it's deciding how you want to do it and how you want to bring up the subject so i'd say my least favorite and the one that orin was just completely not interested in at the time and i've not tried it for a while as i said he's, he's two years and two months now so he's really grasping stories and he remembers stories he'll pick up a book and you can't read it but he'll tell you what the story is in his own way so he understands things now i think firstly it is only kind of green it is all green and white um and my my son loves you know color he's very like color and it's got to be interactive it's got to be exciting and he loves seeing lots of animals and lots of things and i think that's why he's not that interested in this one like and i find of any sort of storybook that isn't very you know crazily colourful with lots going on on the page he doesn't he's not interested he likes spotting things all around the page and telling you about it so I think that's why he's not engaged in this one so much the thing that made me feel uncomfortable when I first read this because I read them all as I received them was and it's not a bad thing but it actually uses eggs and sperm and for me 
I just think, you know, I mean, I've chosen to read these quite young. I just think it's quite heavy. It's quite real for a toddler to be using that terminology. I think this book would be better when he's probably four or five, maybe, when he's a little bit older and he's, you know, books tend to get a bit simpler like this as children get a little bit older. So I think he'd understand it a little bit more. And it is nice in that fact that it is just a picture and then what, you know, a little sentence about what it's about. So it is good in, a, in that sense. So I think it's American because it's mommy and daddy, not mummy and daddy. That, that might be a problem or not a problem for people. Um, and because it does use eggs and sperm, it does kind of teach them about re the reproductive system in a way, in a basic way. So that's good as well. Um, so yeah, the doctor found a very kind lady who had extra eggs. That's how they've approached the lady in it. Um, and that's kind of a topic that I'll bring up in each book of how they've broached the donor and kind of the identity that they've given that because that's, again, I think it's more my comfort than uh, than how it is to Orin as well. Um, but this one's quite nice and it then puts the, you know, the gift in the mummy's tummy. So it is nice. I just think it's possibly, well, there you go. It says for ages three and up. So I just think at the moment it's not interactive enough and it's not you know colorful enough for Oren but I think I do think by the time he's free the way he's going with his books and his stories it will be a bit better I wanted to get a good selection so it just wasn't just one book it was different accounts of it and I'm still going to be hunting for more a special lady this one was Amazon as well I think yeah all but one was Amazon this one is like a little bit more colorful it's got nice pictures, it's got animals in it, which is always a plus with my child. He likes picking out animals. Um, it talks about emotions, so it says, you know, mummy and daddy have tried for a baby and they were getting upset and angry. So it kind of shows the emotional side of it that that you were really wanted, this baby was really, really wanted and, and they tried and tried and tried and things like that. Um, and then it talks about going to the doctor, which I think is important. It's kind of, it's a hard topic, isn't it? And you just don't know how they're going to absorb it. Um, the, my thing with this one, and I saw someone write this in a review on Amazon as well, is that the lady is given a name. And that might not be, it's not a problem, but it's given her an identity. And I think if you were only using this book and reading it quite regularly, it could confuse them. Uh, it could fit, this lady's called Grace. So it, you know, this child might think their biological mother's called Grace. Um, the good thing is that they don't call them a mother. They just call her an egg donut. Um, let me see. They just call her a special lady. A special lady's eggs. Um, and then it's on about waited and waited and waited. And the whole time there's a little heart in the recipient, mummy, mummy's tummy, to become a baby. And yeah, then it names this child. So that's, I guess that could take away from the confusion that this is about another child because it's got a name, it's got a gender, it's not the one that you're talking about. Um, and then, yeah, mummy and daddy are really happy. So, yeah, it's very nice. Um, but it hasn't gripped him yet. So, again, I think maybe that's one for a year or two's time. It's a bit the gift of life. Now, he did react to this one because it is so colourful. And it was bunny rabbits, so he just kept talking about the bunny rabbits. And um, because it's a, a daddy bunny, and the, <laughs> the, the bunny wears check shirts, and Tom wears check shirts. So he's like, oh, daddy bunny, daddy, daddy. Because, yeah, any time he sees any man in a check shirt, it's a daddy. <laughs> I think Tom needs a new wardrobe. Very colourful. I think the illustration in this one is really, really nice. And you might have a child that likes simpler things, but my mine loves like colour and it could be that our next son doesn't you know react too well to this one but it's a really really nice illustration so this one this one's really nice actually i do like this one and it talks about how long they tried for and it went through the seasons and they wanted a baby because they love kids and the mummy's sad i think it's nice to put a little bit of emotion in there and then the lady that brings the special gift has like a million bunnies and i thought bunnies is probably quite a good one because obviously bunnies are quite reproductive aren't they and they it's like a seed so that's the the daddy seed and then there's like a little pot with the mummy seed in which is really nice 
and that they mix them together and then they put them in the mummy's tummy so it's a really nice simple one so i think for younger children this is really nice i love that like the dad then dotes on the mum i think that's brilliant um but he's reacted to this one okay he doesn't ask for it but to be fair we've not tried it in a couple of months because he's just obsessed with he's like any kid he he literally will get a book and that's all he wants to read for a bit so hopefully we can kind of start popping these in this is when the baby's born so this one's nice and um there's not too much on the donor as well it's just that this lady gave a gift and i guess it's just literally no pun intended planting that seed and then feeling comfortable to um then ask questions so this one's my favorite one and i brought this because i saw it recommended i think it's in a facebook group i'm in so if any of you um if you're having donor eggs because you've gone through premature ovarian failure like myself there's obviously the daisy network which is a charity for our condition so i think they've um they renamed it premature ovarian insufficiency because failure was too negative i still call it pof because that's what it's called when i was diagnosed but anyway there's a subgroup that one of the ladies made which i've had like the joy of meeting um she made daisy mums so it's a group for those that are going through donor egg ivf or have donor egg ivf children and there's quite a few of us in there now with kids so it's a really nice group for those that are kind of starting treatment or looking into it. Um, the lady herself that um, created the group has got three donor children from two donors. And uh, her husband actually donated at the same time as their IVF. So it's 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 got a lot of people like that with a lot of knowledge and can answer some questions for you and your worries. And everyone's obviously had different treatment and different medication. So I do recommend the Daisy Mums group because it is really, really supportive. And I think this is where I saw this one recommended. So this one is actually people and it's nice and colourful. I read this to Oren. It was during the first lockdown, so it's been within the last six months. And we read it a couple of times and he was reacting and pointing things out. So um and that's what someone said that their child got very excited by this book. And it's kind of the same sort of thing, you know, it's a nice colourful page, and then the blurb on the other side. And then the doctor, and this is the page you'd go, doctor, doctor, doctor. He's obsessed with doctors. And again, this is quite nice. It does, you probably won't be able to see this. It does a nice little illustration that it's like, this is the nice warm uterus, the egg and the seed. But then it's put like the sperm and ovum in brackets. So it can be a little bit educational as well for as they get to that age. Um, and then, yeah, there was news that, you know, mummy didn't have any eggs and they were sad. And then the doctor's explaining kind of what they need to do and then it's got a little page about um these ladies that donate their eggs to help people that can't have babies it's like oh is it gonna work yes it did and that baby was me and it's all really exciting and um what i love about this one is at the end so i think this is yeah this is by the donor conception network so this last page is just basically a different like there's loads of ways to make families and there's a you know single mother and i've got a friend that's done it on her own as well there's same-sex couples interracial couples and it's just really like you know there's so many ways we can be made and i just think that's really nice so yeah i really really like it um and then you can have the opportunity to put your family photo in the back of this book and at the beginning of pretty much all of them i think as well there's a space to put your name but i really like this one because it touches on like the sadness but it's um really exciting for them as well it's really positive and it's colorful and it's simple but educational at the same time so this is my favorite one and this is the one that's got the best reaction from orange so far um when you decide to start telling them is up to you i think one was too early i do think we're gonna kind of try and read one of the books at least once a week to him now as he begins to understand it and um yeah it's, it's hard it's hard i just want it to always be there i don't want it to ever be a bomb to him so i just kind of want to drip feed it in but not shove it down his throat at the same time so when we had the consultation for our first ivf the counselor said that most donor conceived children or those that are adopted they will want to if they can meet their biological parent but they tend to just meet them once apparently and then that's it apparently um i mean it's hard to know how it's going to go and i think there's more and more people using donor conception for one way or another for 
same sex, for single parent, for, you know, a million reasons. So I don't think it's going to be so strange by the time this generation of children get older, anyway. Um, Sha, you were in Mummy's tummy. That one. That's you. But just before that, with Mummy's big tummy there. And it, oh, my reset. Yeah, well that is two days after you were put in Mummy's tummy. That's up. We will see, but those are the four books I've got. The Donor Conception Network is brilliant. I also ordered a fact sheet, and I've got no idea where I've put it, but it is, um, it's talking pages, and it talks about how to talk to them from up to about the age of eight, and then there's another one you can buy that's like eight to 12, and it's just, to, to, it's just a fact sheet for you of how to broach the subject with not only a child, but I think it's also families, because I know some people don't um, share this information with their family, which, again, you don't really need to, though, do you? It doesn't matter. You don't... <laughs> doesn't really matter um it's just me i want to share my story because i was young and um it's something i promised myself because there was nothing out there for my age group and um there was nothing out there to kind of aspire towards and i do get a lot of messages from quite young girls saying i'm not thinking about a family yet but it's really nice to see that you've got this family and i think especially now because we are so fortunate that we're having a second it's it's really nice that people can you know find that comfort um, that you can have, you know, it can be positive, and I always say this, it does get to me, but I wouldn't change our story at all, I wouldn't change anything about it, I don't look at Aaron and think, oh, I wish he was my DNA, because then he wouldn't be him, um, and he's like, <laughs> the most unique little boy ever, and, uh, I have, keep talking about how this one is going to be, um, if he's going to be the same, if he's going to be different. Um, and from the little sneak peek ultrasound we had the other week, he already looks identical to Aaron. And if you've seen pictures of Aaron and my husband, they are little uh, clones, <laughs> little clones. So it's going to be three of them. <laughs> but um, I hope that's useful. I didn't want to kind of read the story, but I know people don't have to broach the subjects. And this is great. And you can make your own ones. Like I said, that was suggested to us at our counselling session as well and it's something we said we were going to do and you know the baby comes and life you know runs away so we haven't but it's something that I'd like to do I would like to write a book about our journey one day and I would like to write um uh, our story I think that's a lovely title as well our story um because I always say it's our story it's not his story it's not my story it's our story but yeah, any questions, just pop some comments below. If you've got any suggestions for me or any of them that you've seen that you want me to, like, grab and have a read of, I'm more than happy to. Um, thank you very much for watching and all your support, as always, and take care of yourself. Bye.